When you take a look at this deal and the various uh, paths and scenarios that could emerge, what's the best case scenario for you? I am... I think it's really important that Australia drive the decarbonisation uh, transformation of our economy at the speed and scale required. That requires hundreds of billions of dollars of investment. So the fact that Brookfield has put this bid on the table for $20 billion and then supported the bid by saying they will put another 20 to $30 billion of new investment into Australian decarbonisation over the next decade, to me that's an absolute uh, vote winner for me. It's critical we drive the decarbonisation. We need to deal with the energy crisis, the climate crisis, the cost of living crisis, and the only thing that's going to permanently do that is huge amounts of capital. Brookfield has that capital and is willing to do it. Australian Super has the capital but to date hasn't been shown they're willing to do it. So hence why I've been supporting the Brookfield bid for Origin. There's a question of why, what, why you say, you know, on this capital pile, but being more reticent. What, what's, what do you think they're sort of playing up? Why is Australian super being reticent? Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, it's like at a lot of Australian boards, they haven't really accepted that they need to act on the climate science at the speed and scale required. I think Australia is still gripped with the fact that we're the third largest exporter of fossil fuels in the world. As Dr Alan Finkel has said, we are a petrostate. That permeates our politics, our corporates and our finance sector. And so we need industry leaders, global leaders like Mark Carney um, from Brookfield, to, who've been talking about the decarbonisation objective, the need for finance to play a global leading role for the last seven, eight years. Mark Carney was the chair of the Financial Stability Board. He was the governor of the Bank of England back in 2015 with his landmark speech, the tragedy of the commons, the tragedy of the horizon. And now at Brookfield, he's implementing his own words and doing it at the speed and scale required. So I would love Australian super to step up and replicate that because we need all hands on deck. We need the biggest financial players in Australia to actually lean into this, to solve it permanently so that we have a sustainable growth uh, in our economy. Why do you think it's so hard to make the financial uh, and, and the returns argument for faster decarbonisation? It has been hard, although I would argue Minister Bowen has changed the Australian landscape overnight dramatically. Uh, but up until now, we've had a decade of energy and climate policy under the previous government. We've had a government that was hell-bent on going in the wrong direction, taking the last dregs of fossil fuels and exporting them wherever they can for as long as they can. Whereas the Albanese government has committed to 43% decarbonisation of our economy. They've committed to a more ambitious 82% renewables by 2030 target. And Minister Bowen overnight has just announced that the federal government will underwrite 32 gigawatts of new firmed renewable energy capacity within the next four years, tenders over the next four years to crowd in. Now that's 30 or $40 billion of investment. That's even bigger than what Brookfield's putting in, but it works to actually de-risk the landscape. So players like Australian Super and Brookfield and BlackRock and global leaders can actually deliver the capital, but in a risk-adjusted return, so that it's still delivering on their fiduciary duty, which is the number one duty, I acknowledge that. They've got to deliver acceptable risk-adjusted returns for their, their investors, their, their clients. The criticism has been the, 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 the myopic policy paralysis that we've seen, right? How hard do you think it is to turn around that underinvestment in a political cycle? It is very hard and certainly speaking to Minister Bowen yesterday, he emphasised that. We were, we were congratulating him on this 32 gigawatts proposal. Uh, the capacity investment scheme is critically important. It is brilliant to see the Albanese government stepping up so decisively. But as soon as I complimented him, I also said, now let's go really hard on distributed energy resources. That can be deployed in days, in weeks, in months. It doesn't take 10 years, doesn't take 20 years like nuclear would. It can be 
done in days or weeks. And so we need to actually accelerate solutions that can be deployed at speed and scale. Australia will probably do 3.2 gigawatts of distributed energy this year. I was just reading Germany's on track to do 12 or 13 gigawatts of solar alone this year. China, the world leader, is putting in 20 gigawatts of wind and solar per month. So Australia is good, but we've got a long way to catch up to world leaders like China and Germany. Are you optimistic? I am. I am very optimistic. It's amazing to see China's technology scaling up, the investment they're making in batteries, in EVs, in solar, and the deployment of capital in installations within China itself. Like, 34% of all passenger vehicle car sales this year in China are electric vehicle. I am staggered by how fast China is moving. China is Australia's number one trade partner. We just saw Prime Minister Albanese up meeting with President Xi last uh, this month in China. It is great that, that Senator Wong has uh, put out the olive branch and tried to actually make up for the um, missteps that the previous government of Australia made in antagonising our number one trade partner. But maybe the, the ultimate reason why I'm, I'm bullish, as you ask, is that the Chinese module manufacturing capacity expansion, it is doubling every two years. We have seen solar module prices down 40 per cent year to date, mm. 2023. That is a staggeringly big decline and that means we can import massive amounts of solar modules, as can all developing countries around the world, and deploy it at record low prices, which means not only do you build energy security, but you also drive deflation, which in this inflationary year, that is a great message, and China is delivering that for the world.